But if you can bring me some tooth wheels, like this one, I might be able to exchange them for some extra firepower. Elisa is one of those rare Kickstarter projects that actually delivered on its promise. A traditional survival horror game straight out of the 90s era on the PlayStation 1. Fixed camera angles, pre-rendered environments, and even some full pre-rendered cutscenes. Elisa, if anything, over delivers in the best kind of way. Allow me to have some of your smexy time so I can convince you to enjoy this what if Resident Evil was in a haunted dollhouse game but impressively is so much more than just a Resident Evil clone. Oh, and super duper quickly, a big thank you to all the new subscribers who enjoyed my last video on Dragon Quest XI. I'm enjoying my second run through of the game very much and traditional turn-based games never get old for me. Now, back to Alyssa. You wake up in a mansion, classic move, and the first thing that pops out to you is the obvious attempt at recreating PlayStation 1 graphics. And boy, did the developer, Caspar Croes, nail it. The character models and textures look fantastic. There will be no blinking eyes or lips moving on those faces. Even the pre-rendered environments look like they were made using old computers. A handful of full 3D cutscenes keep the tone as well. The mansion is filled with killer life-size dolls and a very healthy variety of enemy types. They all move and animate differently, posing different levels of threats and keeping things interesting. As scary as some of these designs can be, you are encouraged to fight when you can as you are rewarded with tooth wheels each time you beat an enemy. These tooth wheels are your currency and a hand puppet named Palo is your seller. But if you can bring me some tooth wheels, like this one, I might be able to exchange them for some extra firepower. Hey, hey, don't fool me, puppet. Tooth wheels on nothing. Welcome. I actually love the voice acting around this character, who literally just lives in a crack in the wall. Palo sells you a lot of different items, ranging from dresses that can change how you look and alter your abilities, to new weapons and items. I love choice in video games, and this lets the survival horror experience feel a bit more personal since I get to decide what I think is important. Do I want a shiny new dress or a more powerful gun or maybe some ammo? It's fun deciding. Item management is handled in a rather interesting way. You can only carry two types of weapons at a time and one dress. So if you want to walk around with a handgun and shotgun, for example, that's all you get until you go back to your save room and you can swap out your items. Personally, I felt the best combo was one long range weapon and some sort of melee weapon. As a survival horror fan since the beginning and have reviewed the original Resident Evil 2 game on this channel, I know the importance of ammo conservation as much as possible and melee is the best way to save those extra bullets. Interestingly, holding actual items like ammo and med kits do not take up any room in your inventory, so it's only the weapons you need to be picky with. Now, combat takes a bit of getting used to. Aiming is rather challenging, as you think you are aiming at the enemy and completely miss. To help with this issue, you can see this part light up in yellow. This happens when your line of sight with the weapon is correctly facing the monsters you face. You also do unlock a lock-on feature as well which helps make things a bit smoother. Melee is more reliable, as it's really only depth you need to consider. The variety of weapons and abilities is actually rather impressive. All our mates are here. Handgun, shotgun, machine gun, and so forth. After you beat certain bosses, more are unlocked as well, and a spear you can throw quickly became my favorite. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
as I could poke enemies or just throw the whole thing causing a nice amount of damage. This spear would magically come back as well as I left the area so you were never in any risk of losing your spear. It was just fun chucking that thing. Speaking of traditional gameplay and thinking, if you dare think that video games are about escapism and not activism, please subscribe to empower voices like mine. I'll always put first the games themselves and never lecture my audience about random political talking points. Alrighty, let's proceed with my Smexy video. Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> Dresses bought and unlocked are fun to wear as well. They completely change your appearance and impact your stats, letting you reload quicker, heal more, do more damage, and even impacts movement speeds. A guilty pleasure I enjoyed was one that puts you in a stray jacket and forces you to run around and headbutt everything since your hands are tied. I won't spoil it here, but something rather interesting happens with this costume when your health gets a bit lower. Now, Aspa made everything you see in this game and brought it together. But the voice actor of Alyssa and the music was made by his partner. The music in Alyssa is actually brilliant and always suits the tone of the area you are exploring. Save rooms have the relaxing piano music you have come to expect. But other more energetic locations are not afraid to blast you with their own themes. Random music from this game actually is playing in my head as I type these words. The layout of the game is done with much more experience and professionalism than you would expect from a solo developer and his first game. Locked doors connect hallways as you would expect and unlocking them grants access to new areas or shortcuts to old. It all connects really well for the most part, apart from a couple instances where the backtracking can get a bit annoying. Overall, it's a darn good effort. Now. One area I did not enjoy about the game was the game's puzzles. Some of them were simple enough that you didn't really need to think about it much and it did a good job slowing down the pace. However, there was more than one instance of a said puzzle not only being rather difficult to beat, but resulted in your death if you were not fast enough. So unless you managed to save right beforehand, like you saved right around the corner, this cost you a lot of time and even after saving around the corner, sometimes I would have to run for a few minutes between doors and corridors between each attempt of that same puzzle. Getting back to the good stuff, the variety, polish, and clear respect to the PlayStation 1 survival horror era has just blown me away. It's not a short game at all, and even has a new game plus mode available on completion. If this game launched back in the 90s on the PlayStation 1, I am convinced this would have been a cult following right now, and maybe could have been as big as Resident Evil is these days. Shooting is fun once you learn how to actually aim, enemies respond to each hit, and they all have a rather satisfying dying animation, which you watch as you wait for the tooth wheels to just explode out of them. The fixed camera angles work fantastically as well and really make everything feel more cinematic. This may come down to a lack of experience and I don't want to be too harsh on a solo dev who did such a fantastic game, but some rooms did have poor placement of cameras, making running from one side of the room to the other sometimes confusing as the camera angle changed too many times and now I'm not sure if I'm still running towards the same door I set out to 
or if it's a completely different door now. This did not occur often as for the most part the different camera angled positions are done really well but there are a couple dreaded spots in the game where every time I entered the room I didn't really know if I was coming or going. Alyssa is only $26 in Australia full price on Steam. I bought it on the recent sale but knowing what I know now, it's worth every dollar if you're interested you don't need to wait for a sale. The developer has continued support for this game since it launched and there's a bunch of extra things in the game right now that was not there at launch. I will personally be keeping an eye on the developer going forward. It's amazing to think this is his first game and did all this. Keep in mind, I'm not simply impressed he is a one-man show. Even if 10 people worked on this game, I would still be really happy with the end result. There is also a free demo to try out now and see if you're interested. God bless you all, take care, and I'll see you all next time my fellow gamers. Bye bye.